once once you identify once you identify the characteristics and the attributes of the spirit of laziness it begins to show you whether this spirit has any root in and around your life right and the moment you identify that the spirit has root in and around your life you begin to deal with it but when it comes to kingdom prosperity when it comes to kingdom advancement many of us has been deceived including myself when we were learning to follow god certain things were not clearly open unto us all right but by the time you begin to learn god and to unlearn some of the things that we are not properly taught you begin to see the reality that look nothing just happens somebody has to make it happen all right so one of the bedrock of poverty has been taught in this um teaching tonight we can't go back to them fasting and prayer there are people who are not fasting who are not praying that are getting success right so it means therefore the foundation of success is not primarily fasting and prayer but fasting and prayer comes in now because you are a child of god and this the demonic wisdom the satanic wisdom the evil wisdom we be militating against you i've taught you before there are four kinds of wisdom there are those who don't fast and pray they operate by earthly wisdom we have our grandfathers in the village who are very rich, right? No education. Do you agree with that? But they prosper. Mulezi, are you there? Do you agree with that? Yes, I agree, Apostle. Yes. Yeah, so then we have our great great grandfather who are very rich because they were industrious. They apply earthly wisdom. They didn't learn those things from school. They got those technology by hands down um information from their own father on and on we've had rich men and women in all generation who were not even uh um connected to spirits right but there comes to a time when you begin to have success at a particular level of threshold that is beyond normal and beyond ordinary you then know that spirit will visit you <laughs> right and then when you have high level qualification phd in jumpology or whatever you have it's supposed to qualify you to succeed in life right but you hear many graduates are struggling they can uh they can't survive they are finding it difficult to make ends meet why because now all tasks are speaking against them so there are those who are operating by earthly wisdom they are succeeding there are those who are operating by sensual academic wisdom they are also succeeding but when devilish wisdom is provoked against earthly and sensual wisdom you can come down to zero this is where now spiritual battle comes in so that is where fasting and prayer comes in against devilish wisdom why do you need to do all of those stuff because now no matter what you do no matter the hard work you do no matter the connection you think you have because spiritual altars are speaking against you they they have employed the power of demons to stop what we walk normally you now need the power of god to be provoked against those demonic forces to allow your sensual and earthly wisdom to produce result and for them to multiply it faster better greater than you would have done it with your normal capacity i call it natural spiritual wisdom and um, advanced spiritual wisdom does that help you yes apostle thank you okay thank you god bless you all right over to you ma'am any other question yes, okay, okay Faye, wait a moment mom is adding to yeah, the wisdom yeah yeah say i will call upon you as soon okay. i think just to add on what dad has said Mulezi, um, mm -hmm. once you identify the characteristics or rather once you identify you have or your son or anyone you know um or your beloved one has the spirit of laziness you identify that characteristic of the spirit what do you do what is it that is prominent in this um in in, in this person who harbors the spirit of laziness you obviously agree with me that that person would definitely just want to sit around the tv eat popcorns and uh, 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 probably sleep the whole day, doesn't want to get to, to grab a book, you know, and, and read a book of, of, of which will, you know, make them grow. This person doesn't even want to go outside, maybe to work in the garden or to do anything productive. They are just there. So that once that is identified, then all you need to do is, uh, apart from the prayers and um, um, fasting, 
obviously you now have to work uh, in reverse of what activities are identified with laziness. Once, once you identify yourself as having this spirit and you're sitting around, you, you identify, you sleep around a lot, you distract the sleepiness. You work towards doing the opposite of what la- the lazy spirit brings to you so that you are able to um, counteract those activities. You start making yourself busy. You start reading productive books. You start moving in the trajectory opposite to what laziness you know, uh, uh, brings around. So then you'll be able to work your faith around being um, lazy. So that is what I wanted to add. You need to get up and refuse laziness at work, you know, in reverse of the lazy of the lazy spirit. You work away from what it will um, it will put you into uh, into in, 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 into performing. You want you are performing laziness around TV. So once you identify that, you get up, you do productive productive activities. So that is one of the ways that you can, you know, uh, couple up with fasting and prayer against the spirit of laziness. Okay, thank right, you very so much. What man so is much. saying that you need to map out strategy against the spirit of laziness. Once you identify it as a spirit, then you do not wrestle with flesh and blood. You have to combat it also with spiritual weapon, right? No matter the effort we put in whatever we are doing when there is a spirit involved children of god you need to provoke advanced spiritual law of the spirit of life against those demonic or that particular forces so i recommend to everyone check the catalog the catalyst of prosperity we might get there some other time but for those who can go ahead check it poverty is a spirit and catalyst of prosperity. It's important you check these things. One of the greatest factor that will reveal uh, the attribute of the spirit of laziness is that you can't manage your time. Did you get what I'm saying, somebody? When you yes. are finding it hard to manage your time, you are dealing with spirit. When you are forever procrastinating, you are not able to accomplish all that you wish to do in a day. And if not, all of you are already guilty now. <laughs> yes, sir. So you are dealing with the spirit. So effective time management is one of the banner and trophy that you are conquering the spirit of laziness. <laughs> yes, thou a man diligent in his business, he shall stand before kings and not and before, not before men. men. Every successful businessman will tell you one thing. Time is money. Is that correct? Yes. Correct. yes. Time is money in what sense? It means if you don't know how to manage your time, you'll be poor. You will, be, you will remain under tribute. You will be collecting salary all your life. But the day you master how to manage your day, how to manage your time, without encouraging yourself to fail, then you are already conquering laziness and you are working towards favor. Permit me to say to you with all the loudest voice I can, God doesn't employ lazy people. Neither do the devil employ lazy people. You've, you've seen occultic men, you've seen witches and wizards, you've seen how they work diligently around the clock. When you are sleeping, they wake up. Nothing just happened by laziness. Deal with this spirit. Many Christians are infused with the spirit of laziness in the name of spirituality. How do you go to mountain for seven days to fast and pray when, when you have work to do? Do you understand what I'm talking about? If you're fasting and prayer, yeah. do not cast out the spirit of laziness. If your fasting and prayer did not deliver strategy to you. Listen, Solomon was made the wisest man. Angels were not bringing him money. He had to put strategy in place. Read your Bible very well. God made Solomon the wisest. Uh, but what the wisdom produced, it became the richest. How did it happen? He put strategy in place and he worked towards it. Even God Almighty walks miracle. It is a walk. Stop sleeping around the whole day, the whole night. You must be able to calculate how many hours you want to sleep in a day and jump out of bed. The hand of the diligence shall be out, but the slogan shall be under tribute. The, the, those who are paying your salary, they are awake when you are asleep. It's work. Permit me to say, use my personal example at the level at which I am. How on earth do you think you get this kind of quality of deep teachings? Do you know how many hours that goes into research, that goes into prayers? Permit me to say to you, 
on the average on a daily basis i don't think i am in the presence of god less than six seven hours per day are you hearing what i'm saying to you because i know the destiny of people is hanging upon my neck i've got to do this work god does not employ lazy people that's why i chose paul <laughs> he's a chosen vessel to me if you want to be relevant with god you must be you must be a hard worker. You must. Jesus Christ said, I must do the work of it that sent me while it is day. The night cometh when no man can walk. I must walk the work of it that sent me. It's, you, you need to be serious with your life. Laziness is one powerful spirit that the devil will use to drown you. That's why you don't have fellowship with God. That's why you, your devotion is not consistent. That's why you can't worship seven times in a day because you are lazy. That's why you can't pray. That's why you can't study the scripture. But you realize you have time for every other stupid things except the things of God because of the spirit of laziness. All right, Faye, go ahead. Your question or your comment. Yes, Apostle, I had a question. Um, you mentioned something else related that could be related to this and you mentioned evil altars speaking against you in the poverty area and i was wondering um if we are a new christian in christ and we came to christ and we are now in the kingdom would that be automatically canceled or done with because we've been translated to a new kingdom but why do we still carry these altars? You are not carrying anything in Christ as carryover. You are only carrying things as ignorance. And what God wants to do for you, many of you are not ready to pay the price. And I'm going to explain what I'm saying to you. The Bible says you have been translated from the power of darkness, right? Yes. Unto the kingdom of his dear son. When you become born again, you became translated from the power of darkness. Colossians 1, 13, who has delivered you from the power of darkness and has translated you into the kingdom of his dear son. You were consciously translated from the power of darkness. Yes. But when you become born again, one thing all of you did not want to do is the advantage Satan has over you. And what is that? Follow me to the book of Galatians. Uh, Okay, let's see, is it Galatians now? The Bible says, an heir, even though he be master of law. Oh, Galatians chapter 1, chapter 4, from verse 1. Galatians chapter 4, follow me quickly. Now I say that the heir, as long as he is a child, who is he? Who is, who is he as long as he's a child? Let me read to you from a more simpler translation. Let's see, easy to read, easy to read. Yeah, we might help us. Galatians chapter 4. This is what I am saying. When young children inherit all that their father owned, they are still no different from his slaves. <laughs> Faye, are you getting that? No, I don't get it. What's the name of your daughter? Kai. Okay, Kai owns everything you own, right? Yes. Uh, okay, is Kai able to drive your car? No. At her age, how old is she? She's two. <laughs> So, you still do everything for Kai, right? Yes, yeah, I do everything for Kai. But she owns everything? Yes, 100%. But she doesn't even know what she owns? Yes. Exactly. So, and yeah, even though he be master of all, even though he owns everything, now look again, Galatians chapter 4, verse 1 to 3, whatever version you are reading, let's go through it now. This is what I'm saying, when young children inherit all that their father owned, they are still no different from his slaves. It doesn't matter that they own everything. While they are children, they must obey those who are chosen to care for them. But when they reach the age, the father said, they are free. It is the same for us. We were once like children slaves to the useless rules of this world. The problem most of us have had and many of us are having is because we think we have grown and our lives and the results we are bearing shows that we don't know anything about God and our inheritance in Christ Jesus. We make noise every day that I'm enjoying here, I'm here with Christ, but the results in our life shows we are afflicted like any other person. We suffer like any other person. We are, we are bullied but, but because we don't know the rituals, we don't know the keys of the kingdom. The first thing Jesus said when he said, upon this rock I'll build my church is, the next statement was, I will give you keys. So when you have the keys, then you don't know the door. What do you do with the key? Nothing. Exactly. So many people have been taught keys, they don't know the door. Many people know door, they don't know keys. So what is the problem? Lack of discipleship. I said to you the other day, Nobody can be discipled in one year. Forget it. Just stop dreaming. Eh? There are some of you here who has been born again for 30 years, 20 years, 
If you are one of them, say amen. Yes. But you still have issues in your life you don't know how to solve. Yes, and you are yes. not yet a disciple. It means you are not you are just you are just <laughs> you are just a church goer. You are just a numbered member of the body of Christ. You are still a babe. You don't know the keys. You don't know how to use the keys of the kingdom. You were translated from the power of darkness into a kingdom. And in that kingdom, Jesus Christ said, what you must be looking for in the kingdom are the keys. I teach the keys. I teach the keys night and day because that's the, that's the way. That's the only way. What do we call wisdom? Who can answer that question? Application of knowledge. Anybody else want to try it? Thanks, Becky. It means the keys of the kingdom are application of knowledge of what works, right? Say yes. we are still under your issues, right? I need answers. When we talk about wisdom, what is wisdom? Wisdom are keys. A wise person knows what to do that we get the result, right? Yes, sir. We are dealing with serious stuff, right? Okay, follow me to yes, Matthew yes. 16, Matthew, Matthew 16, Matthew 16, verse 18. And I say unto, unto you that thou art Peter, and upon this rock, the rock they are already told you, the rock is the revelation that he is Christ. I will build my ecclesia. What is translated as church is a complete mistranslation. We suffer in the end of what some people gather themselves together in the 16th century and they said they want to interpret the scripture. I'm coming for a whole month or more to teach you deliverance from wrong biblical interpretation. The word church is one of the most leading interpretation in the scripture of King James Version and all other modern versions because Jesus did not tell you it's building a church. Jesus is telling you it's building a governmental system. Are you hearing what I'm talking about? So he said, upon this rock, I will build my governmental system. Ecclesia. What Jesus is building is a kingdom, not a forward gathering of people lifting hands every day. No, it's a kingdom. And he said, upon this revelation that you are the Christ, I will build the kingdom and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it, which means there will be war. All right. And I will give unto you the keys of that same kingdom so that whatsoever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. That's another misinterpretation. <laughs> <laughs> because what is written here is that whatsoever you bind on earth is because it's already bound in heaven. Whatsoever you lose on earth is because it's first of all losing heaven. But when you read this text, it's not the same thing. You see why we are being misled by some group of lifeless people who try to interpret the word of God in their own lifeless understanding. But we thank God for anointed vessels like unto us and I magnify my office under the Holy Ghost who opens my eyes to the truth. So that's why you you operate from the spirit realm, first of all, you look at the things that are not seen. Until you win first in the spirit, you cannot win in the physical. Imagine yourself binding things physically that you have not bound first of all in the, in the spirit. You've got to win first of all in the spirit before you can win in the, in the physical. One of the teachings that God is asking me to show you is the spiritual rankings and hierarchies of spirit, angels, and demons. So that you can see where you are in comparison to the demon, and I'll show you how to operate in the court of heaven and how to do proper calculated spiritual warfare according to the kingdom principle. So you've seen that Jesus, the next thing he gives to us are keys. What are keys? The wisdom of God. And that's why he tells you the children of this world, they are wiser. That's why he told you be as wise as serpent because the technology they are using to get result is the same technology you will use to get result but in a righteous way now the technology of faith is the same technology of sin do you understand there is no difference what makes people sinner is the same thing that makes people righteous it depends on the source <laughs> every man is tempted when he's drawn away of his own laws and enticed okay and laws when it is conceived bring it forth sin bring it forth sin and sin when it is finished bring it forth death right so let's look at it what is bible saying every man is tempted when he's drawn away you are drawn away in your subconscious mind in your imagination all right the devil paints a picture jesus christ said in matthew 5 28 if you look unto a woman to lord after her in your heart you have already committed the adultery don't don't wait for the action the action is the finishing part i reward you payment of debt so what is faith that means if i can lust after a woman in my heart and it's already seen oh, okay abraham does what abraham believed god what is believing 
That's another misinterpretation or a difficult interpretation. What does it mean to believe? You say, I believe, I believe. What do you, what do you mean by believing? To believe is to lust after something in your heart. And loss is not always evil. It depends on the source. Because the Bible talks about the loss of the spirit and the loss of the flesh. Okay, so if I lost after good thing in my heart, I have it already, right? Who is answering me? <laughs> yes, sir. So if I lost after a woman in my heart, Pastor Mrs. We first of all go AYR. Let alone God now go A. <laughs> <laughs> I've committed adultery already. So if I lost after becoming a millionaire in my heart, I've committed a millionaire already. Simple, right? Wow. If I true. lost after my husband becoming a servant of God, I've committed him a servant of God already. That is the meaning of believing. That's the meaning of believing. The Bible says Abraham staggered not at the promise of God through unbelief. All right. What did they do? He considered not the deadness of Sarah's womb. Romans chapter 4 from verse 17 downward. And he considered not the deadness of Sarah's womb. That means in his imagination, he has seen Sarah not able to conceive. But this time around, he refused to do that consideration. Again, in the book of Hebrews chapter 11, the Bible says he received Isaac back in a figure, in his imagination. Child of God, your imagination is the root of breakthrough or breakdown, success or failure. Whatever you see in that dream is a reality. Does that help you? So faith, the problem is many people drop out of spiritual school before their time. And when the life examination comes, they couldn't pass the test. Do you understand that? Yes. Yeah. Because life examination will definitely come, but you will not be able to pass the test. And it will show that you drop out of class because when the examination comes, the Bible says, if you faint in the day of adversity, your strength is small. Small, small devils are afflicting you and you are looking for pastor to pray for you because you were never taught your dominion as a child of God. You never practiced. And so how do you go to school without test? When you are allowed to test, which is called the trial of your faith, that's where many people fail and they never rise above the level. And how do you get promoted if you don't pass the exam? That's the whole essence of temptations, trials, of faith, afflictions that God allowed to come sometimes He deliver them out of them all. These are opportunity for you to prove that he is the healer, it is, this is what it means to contend for your faith, all right? So again, I recommend to you another teaching in the catalog, the other side of God. So bottom line, many, many are suffering only because of ignorance. As a young pastor, I began to teach the church, there are two devils. There's a devil you know, and there's a devil you don't know. The devil you don't know is actually the one that made the devil you know a devil. And that the name of that devil is ignorance. <laughs> Uh, my people are what? They are destroyed because they don't fast and pray. They lack knowledge. And so knowledge is what you already have the revelation of. You know it works. Wisdom dwell with the prudent. The prudent dwell, deal it with knowledge. So application of knowledge is called wisdom. When you say somebody is wise, it means they know what to do. They know where we are on how to get things done. They are not guessing. That's why every wise woman doesn't guess how to love her husband, how to keep her own home. But many of you want to marry, but you don't know how to raise godly children. You don't know how to keep a man. You don't know how to make a man happy. You don't know how to submit. You want to work marriage based on what your mother or the world is working their own marriages with. It will fail. But when you understand the principles and the keys of the kingdom to make marriage work, then you will get into the marriage with knowledge because only a prudent woman deal it with knowledge. And the Bible says a prudent wife come from the Lord. And so few of my daughters who want to be married now, the, the, the greatest advice I give you, get prudent, period. Once you allow yourself to be schooled by the Holy Ghost on how to make marriage work, then you qualify yourself for a particular man of destiny that God wants a peaceful woman to be his wife to help him fulfill his destiny. So if you are not prudent, you just want to marry, you will be qualified for your level of foolishness. <laughs> you will get to one that you will frustrate. <laughs> Praise God. Many of you marry the wrong persons. Yeah. There's no gain saying about that because of level of ignorance. Any other question? Thank you, Lord. Over to you, Global Rituals. Mama, I've, I've done my part. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, do we have any more questions, clarifications, or even contributions? Do we have anyone who wants to say something before we close? Before we close, Ma? Yes. I. M what 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 stood out for me was the point that the, the misconception that we hear that we. We believed that to favor and all that you go, then they say receive, receive. And then 
after receiving you expect things to just automatically happen that 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 for me is the biggest revelation of the of the century of a lifetime you expect things to ha- to happen automatically uh, you know um things should just be we're not aware that the minute that happens they, then it, there's a part that then you must gear up pull up your socks and start working hard towards that as you could also even more strengthen yourself in rituals to to bring it to pass so that for me is, is the biggest um, revelation of the century and every day i remind myself of, of that and i hear it again today in 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 what we are taught in please can i ask a question please yes please you can go ahead um my question might not be related to the main teaching of the day but um apostle mentioned something about marriage if you discover that you married wrong mm-hmm. and the let's say for instance the marriage is broken beyond repair mm-hmm. uh is there any circumstance under which you can remarry as bible said god has us Are you sure about the whole divorce? Thank you, Mommy. Let me just, I'm excited. I wanted wanted, wanted him to identify himself, Apostle, wanted to know the personal thing. I don't know. That is too much to ask for. Yes, I'm I'm calling from United Kingdom. My name is Steve. Oh, Oh, okay, great. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Vicky. Okay, Uncle Steve. Are you yes, sure the Bible says God God hates divorce? Okay, sir. <laughs> I know the text you are quoting. Now the same yeah. God that hates divorce looks at the children of Israel and says, Israel has committed wisdom and they have committed fornication against me, so I have divorced them. Okay. Jesus Christ, in the days of Jesus Christ, they ask him, All right, so Moses um told us that we should give a writing of divorcement. A lot of misconception, sir, a lot of misconception. And the writing of divorcement, or which is called the bill of divorcement. The bill of divorcement is a kind of uh, a bill of quantity, right? That the man has to give to the woman that he stopped loving. Okay? We, I think I need to do a thorough teaching. Or I, I, I refer you to teachings of marriage. Please, if you're able to subscribe to the channel and Google marriage, you have about 11, 12 teachings of marriage on the, that we upload on the YouTube channel that we help. So... There are requirements in the scriptures that allow you to remarry. There is no teaching of the scripture that says no divorce, no remarriage. We are in the Bible says, and I'm saying this with all authority and confidence and integrity in the Holy Ghost, that the bishop must be the husband of one wife, all right? It doesn't say that the bishop was never divorced. It didn't say the bishop wife was never divorced. Okay, you know, there were circumstances around sometimes around that I had to go in complete aggressive research of exactly what God is saying. Jesus told the disciples and the followers and the Pharisees that in the beginning it was not so. Moses, because of the hardness of your heart, gave you a bill of divorcement and a writing of divorcement. Details to come later. But in 1 Corinthians chapter number 7, he began to give the requirement to remain in marriage and the requirement to be divorced. There are various options where the unbelieving depart, the brother or the sister is free to remarry in the law. But that's not the only reason that a brother or a sister will be able to remarry in the law. At least I can give you two options. When the woman is dead or the man is dead, when the, when the man or the woman is an unbeliever, is not ready to allow you to serve the purpose of God, then you are free to remarry only in the law. But there are other options that we have to analyze your case and we will be able to give you integritable, legalistic sanction that brother go remarry in the Lord. You are living with a woman who is a first class daughter of the devil. You confirm and it's obvious that this person is actually into fraternity, is a gift of the devil into your life based on ignorance and is ready to ruin you not to fulfill the purpose of God for your life. Marriage is for destiny. It's not for procreation alone. You are married so that you can achieve the purpose of God for your life. The woman is expected to be a contributor to the fulfillment of the agenda of God for you. If the woman is not fulfilling that purpose, she has forfeited the reason why she exists in the first place. And so you cannot hang your destiny in balance because there is a woman that is not aligning with your destiny. What you have to do is to report to your employer to send back to you someone that will help you to fulfill that destiny since this one has chosen not. So 
you need advanced wisdom like i usually advise you need advanced wisdom so you need to talk to me one on one we analyze your case and i can give you a certificate of remarriage or a certificate of divorce once your case is biblically analyzed so there is nothing that says no divorce no remarriage and let me make you laugh every doctrine that says that forbids marriage is a doctrine of the devil okay this can I'm i sure ask a question yes please ma'am uh pastor you said something which has given me a clear understanding i want to ask whether it's so he said what you last after you've already got it if you last to become a millionaire you're already a millionaire what i'm talking about believing there was a time i wrote the word believe and i was just looking what does it mean to believe so i'm very happy we are dealing with it believing is to last after and the uh, beatitude this is a blessed are they who hunger and thirst after righteousness so thirsting and hungering after something and i say it is last when you hunger and thirst after righteousness or righteous like a woman a man it's a lot last. it's a lot yes it's a lot you mm. walk not after the lust of the flesh but you are walking after the lust of the spirit so the spirit has a lust the lust of the spirit are the desires of god or the desires of the holy spirit for you and you must make it your last and when it becomes a loss it means an unquenchable passionate unbreakable unbending passion to achieve it this is a big revelation it has helped me that has gladdened my heart because <laughs> i have struggled to get these things right and i'm happy the holy spirit has brought it through you i'm very happy about it so I must love for the righteous things. I, <laughs> I, 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 I'm too happy. I must love for that my. That is the meaning of faith, mommy. That is the meaning of faith. The just shall mm. live by lasting after okay. righteous stuff. I understand. That's the meaning of faith. Now. Without lasting, you can't please God. I understand. It has made it very simple for me. I Thank must you, last, last for my children to do the right thing. They have already done it doesn't matter what the situation look like physically continue to look at what you have lost after in your imagination in your heart yeah. as a man lost in his heart so is he as a man lost after a woman in his heart is a is an adulterer if he lost after going to america nothing can stop him even if, even if it is not the will of god that person will do anything to get to america if they reject his visa 10 times he will keep reapplying or we or we he will go in illegally because it is a last whatever you don't lust after it can never manifest okay am i blessing somebody that is the believing what that is believing. what believing is all about oh thank you jesus <laughs> so the woman talking is 73 years old in case some of you don't know this is our grandmother in the house so I'll you wonder what i'll be 75 i'm in a prayer you see what i'm talking about what does she want to do with lusting you better wake up those of you that are still young best way start lusting i don't consider anything one thing i thank god for i don't consider myself as late look at the age that we have getting this time Yes mom Abraham was born at 75 you are less than the yeah. age that God called Abraham yeah. you still have a long way to go so I you can pass by church in Ghana don't worry we will come and Thank and meet you Amen. Amen. when you see people like this means they are they have elongated their life they are not ready to die all right <laughs> melody start losting <laughs> latasha what are you losting after you have been quiet today let's hear from latasha Where is Natasha? Uncle Steve, I believe you've been blessed, right? Yes, yeah, God bless you. So God bless you. Yeah. yeah, so we'll talk later. I'm going to get rid of you afterwards. Okay, sir. Thank you. I'm sorry, I couldn't talk at the moment. Sorry. Yeah, okay, Latasha, we we love you, all right. So okay. if there's no other question, so we the 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 icing upon the cake tonight is that the Bible says Jesus Christ said, if you shall say to the sycamore tree, and we not doubt. doubt means you would change the lost and you will not doubt in your heart nothing shall be impossible unto you the proof of desire is pursued nobody can stop a man that is lasting no devil can stop you when you are a lustful of after righteousness the holy ghost is handicapping your life
when you are a laster after a righteousness. That's why <laughs> he says, I will profess and say unto them, ye workers of iniquity. The problem Abraham had, not conceiving Isaac, was he was not lusting after Isaac. Until God said, number the stars. And for the first time, he saw what God was saying. Until you see, while we look not at the things that are seen, Listen, this beautiful woman passed by me and Satan wants me to start analyzing the shape and the body. I've told you how I handle this. And every man go through this. Don't be deceived by those who are over spiritual. So look at the back here, look at the front here, look at the shape. I turn it to instrument and gadget or praises to God. That's a beautiful shape. God is a magnificent designer. We give him praise. That's an object of praise to God. There is no last. So the only one I last after is the one whose voice you are hearing, all right? She has to model for me around the house sometimes, okay? So I lost after a, a new dress, new... I lost after growing younger, so you understand what I'm talking about. So don't be okay. jealous. <laughs> Thank you very much, Apostle. I saw... Um, uh, oh, it's Fisto. Did you want to say something? Fisto? I wanted to ask a question. It was just after... Um, yes, ma'am. Talking about lasting and is there a chance that um i'll use myself like i've never lasted after marriage so is there a chance that the reason why i'm not married is because i've never lasted after it so like is there a chance that there's some things that the devil makes us sleep on so we don't um have this last after these things am i making sense absolutely first john chapter five first john chapter 5 first john chapter 5 verse 14 before first john chapter 5 verse 14 if you read matthew chapter 7 verse 7 ask and eat whatever it is that you are asking shall be given seek lusting ye shall find knock and the door shall be open right verse 8 says everyone that asketh does what sifiso Jesus. Oh, are you are you sure? I'm actually not sure. For everyone, Matthew 7, 8, that ask, continue to ask, we continue to receive. And everyone that continue to seek, seek it, we continue to find, right? And everyone that knocks, we continue to have the door, they are knocking open. You cannot ask continuously. You cannot seek continuously. You cannot knock continuously without lust. So in that case then, because all this is quite confusing. It's not confusing, but I, I see where some people have missed out on certain things, not yes, by their own desire, but by the reason of the fact that there's been maybe altars that have caused them to sleep on that. So these people do not necessarily desire or lust for these things, not because they don't want them, but because they're because not even the aware of that they are blinded. They are yes. blinded to it, so, right? Mm. The, if our gospel is it is hidden to them that are lost, whom the God of this world has blinded their mind. You know, I taught a teaching, the secret successful people know and they do not want you to know. I taught it based on Matthew 7, 7 and 8. You cannot get what you are not passionate about. Look, the woman with the issue of blood did not sit down at home. What did she do? She asked to know if, if Jesus is able to. She saw, she went, and she got it. This Syrophoenician woman heard from her country. She did not sit down believing, confessing. No, she came all the way. The centurion did not just sit down. He said, say to the master, you don't need to come to my house. Speak the word only, and my servant shall be here. You will never get what you never sorted, asked, pursued, knocked. You see those two, three, those two, three things. Ask, seek, knock. Ask, seek, knock. Don't you ask for the things you need, right? You know, and the Bible says um, in Luke chapter 18, Jesus Christ said, he gave us a Bible that men ought always to continue to ask. He gave us the Bible of the unjust judge to symbolize what God may be acting sometimes, to test whether you have faith. And the reason for your faith being tried is to test whether your lust is strong enough. When your faith says yes, God will not say no. Okay, right? So whatever you really want to go for it, right? Okay, now let's yeah. go to Facebook 14. 
First John 5 verse 14 and 15. I want to show you something beautiful here. First John 5 verse 14. And this is the confidence that we have in him that if we ask anything according to his will, he heareth us. And if we know that he heareth us, whatsoever we ask, we know that we have the petition that we desire out of him. There are two things we pray for, your desire and the will of God. I may have a desire, then I need to present it to God in prayer. And I will not stop asking him until he gives me the rema. I've taught you faith doesn't pray because prayer doesn't give, deliver any result. Prayer leads you into faith. And the moment faith comes, you stop praying. You start applying the protocols of faith. How many Christians understand all this technology? But the children of the devil do. You don't see them pray because their prayer is done in the secret. You only see them do enchantment. They put protocols of faith in place. When they go to the to the Abalis, when they go to the Sangoma, when they go to the occulting people, they give them incantations, which is the word of faith. And they give them rituals to do, which are works of faith. But the prayer was done in the shrine. The prayer was already done in the shrine. <laughs> and then, what do you want to do? We want Janet to run mad in Yugoslavia. So, take Janet's picture. At, the, the, at midnight, put it against the wall and begin to say to Janet everything you want to happen to Janet. That is the word of faith. You see that the devil is a thief. <laughs> But now in church, the pastor has taught you, pray until something happens. What is the something? You don't even know what he's talking about. Why don't you break this thing down? Pray until you have a word from God. By any means, the word of God comes to you. I've taught you 10 things to do to activate the voice of God, how to know the voice of God. Go through all these teachings. This is why I teach you every day so that we will not be deceived by the enemy. Somebody not desiring marriage. There is no husband that will come. You are just deceiving yourself. You don't desire prosperity. You remain an employee. You don't desire a better life. You remain at your level. There is no angel that will force blessing on you. You need to desire it first. It is the strong desire that takes people to the devil's camp. Because the situation has gotten to a level that, look, I need a solution now. Now you are ready. So when you don't have that kind of desire, God has nothing to bless you with. Nevertheless, there are general blessings of God for all his children, right? You will get all those spiritual biscuits, spiritual lollipop, but when it comes to the real deed, claiming the promises of God, but ye have need of faith and patience after ye have done the will of God. Be ye followers of them who through faith and patience contend earnestly for the faith. There is no devil that can stop your last when it is a, when it is lustful enough no devil can stop it because that's why it tells you this is the victory that overcomes the world that is your faith nothing else no matter what satan is doing right now over your health over your situation over your circumstances you stay on god with god with his word until everything change and you let god know you know what we are not going i'm not going to shift ground because i know this works and until you respond i'm not going to shift ground Go to the teaching catalog and check for Elijah's code. You see how Elijah did the effectual fervent prayers of the righteous. They are there. You have learned so much. That's why I'm taking you back so that you can remember some of these things. And we ask questions. We crack them. What you don't understand, we crack them. And then we everybody learn from you and from your question. And we go and practice. This is Jesus Global Ecclesia, where the Holy Ghost is the teacher. Over to you, mommy. <laughs> Sibiso, have you been helped? Yes, sir. Thank you. All right. Any other one? Or we call it a night. Mom, are you still there? Yes, I'm still here, Apostle. Um, the conversation is going on well. Um, we love the interaction in Jesus' name. So do we have one last one? Do we have anyone who we can take on, you know, before we close? Do we have any burning issue before we close? <laughs> can I ask? Can I say something? Yes, Mami Vivian, you can go ahead. When Pastor was teaching us through the Holy Spirit that God speaks to us through our emotion. And then I was just looking at myself. Why is my life the way? The way. Then I realized that I have in my subconscious so many things which should not be there and they are now coming out and i say uh-huh so right now if i think of anything which is negative immediately i try to see the positive side of it not to look and then continue seeking that then i i i i, I get peace within me this started not quite long i was just i didn't know what meditation about when uh, persuade asked pastor what does meditation mean and i got 
I caught the revelation from. So anything that I see which is not positive, I should not accept it. Immediately change the I change the picture, imagine the positive side until they reject and then I get peace within me and I'm okay. So this is this is how the Holy Spirit is dealing with and I thank God for it. All right. And last my last word is that everybody must become a murderer of evil thoughts and negative thoughts. Just murder them immediately. Murder them immediately. Murder it immediately. Murder it immediately. Give no place to the devil simply means Guy, keep your heart with all diligence because out of it are the issues of life. Be diligent, right? Murder the thought immediately. Murder it. Uh, this thing is not going to work. Uh -uh. Murder it. Murder it. Kill it. Be a killer of every negative thoughts because if you don't, you will have yourself to blame. We'll see you tomorrow. Same time, same station, same ministry, same Holy Ghost. God bless you. God bless you. We love you. Amen.